uh, Tony and Leah from Live Life Lounge and Unza Agri and Realtive Excellence Global. Uh, today is an absolutely honor to have a few guests in our investment property update of what's happening in Switzerland, what's happening locally. Uh, a lot of clients always uh, asking, you know, what's happening in the property market? Is it a bubble uh, with interest rates and inflation that's gone up? So we've got an incredible uh, panel today. A huge warm welcome to Rolf uh, Zach, uh, co-founder uh, with Hypertech RG. We've also got uh, Janis Frakakis from Swiss Property and uh, Josh Weston uh, from our international team here in Zouk. So just to give you a little run, run through and what we're going to be talking about today, um, we would like to be short, sweet, but also give you the most important nuggets instead of giving you long, boring graphs. We want to make it interesting, exciting um, and informative at the same time. Uh, there's a lot of hype in property markets all over the world. If you look at what's happening in, in America with high interest rates, uh, in what's happening in the UK, what's happening in Europe and in Switzerland. Um, so I really want to unpack and focus on Switzerland today. Then we're going to talk about interest rates. Uh, Rolf is going to be talking of, uh, about what's uh, happening in the market, what's happening uh, for the future of uh, interest rates next year. So a lot to talk about. And then we're going to be unpacking uh, the new project, the Nest Residence here in Unsa Agri with Swiss Property. We've got Yanis Fakakis on, on the line in today's uh, meeting. So with no further ado, uh, just to give you a background who I am, uh, Tony Indley, uh, co-founder of Realtive Excellence in Cape Town, family business, uh, my dad being a Swiss, I moved from Switzerland to, to Cape Town um, and basically started a real estate company 46 years later. Uh, my brother, uh, Sean Britt, and myself uh, managed the company uh, with the likes of my mom, Ms. Alien, who's our financial director. We've got a team of 100 uh, um, team members in Cape Town specializing in residential, online auctions, commercial and industrial property, and new developments and offshore. I've had the role of specializing in new developments over the last 25 years. We are take data and work with uh, developers to unpack what the market is looking for, what the market is needing, and helping developers de-risk their projects. So very, very excited, seeing a lot of developments. And in Switzerland, like all over the world, is the most exciting things because we can offer the most uh, important, um, uh, one of the most important assets someone will ever buy in the lifestyle. So I really, really love what I do. Um, and it's really just understanding what's happening in, in the Swiss property market. Um, and I'll talk about Swiss property markets in a level compared to Europe, America, uh, UK, and South Africa. So three of the biggest fundamentals, obviously uh, property markets is linked on, on interest rates. Um, one of the biggest things that I see in America and the UK and, and this is certain parts of it is, you know, the lending criteria, you can get 100% finance in America and in the UK. Currently, um, over the last two years, uh, there's been pressure on, on the property markets linked to inflation, and inflation is therefore linked to interest rates, which have increased all over the world. So everyone's had the same uh, issue, uh, yet Switzerland has been a little bit guarded from this Um one of the reasons is uh, most people that buy property in Switzerland only mortgage or finance maximum 70 to 80%. Where in America, UK, South Africa, there's a lot of 100% finances that, that's happening. Um, and if you look at property, especially in Switzerland, because it's so expensive, a lot of people rent because they have to, uh, because they have to have 30% deposit by buying a property. But because property market within Switzerland, only 8.9 million people, there's very limited land to develop on, there's a massive demand. So if you look at Switzerland in the whole, over the last 20 years, property prices have grown by 89%. So a lot of people ask me, Tony, you know what, should I rent or should I buy? And the question is, I always use this as an example, if you're renting at 10,000 Swiss francs a month, uh, over, over a year, you're looking at 120,000 francs. Over 10 years, that's 1.2 million Swiss francs. But you're not just lost um, the uh, rental amount uh, that you've lost because of renting, but you've lost the potential capital growth. So if you owned a property at 1.5 million or 2 million Swiss francs, if you look at growth over the last 20 years, um, you could have almost bought that property cash. So 
question is it better to rent or buy it's always going to be better to to buy than than rent a property um if you look at the hotspots in 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 switzerland with regarding to property prices your two high uh really um fundamental growing capital growth areas is uh, geneva central switzerland of zurich zurich um our suites those sort of the areas of the hot spots where you're looking at uh, your average property prices um uh, ranging from anything from 10,000 to uh 30,000 Swiss francs per square meter your average in Switzerland ranges from anything between 6,000 if you look at the top left bar from 6,000 Swiss francs to about 14,000 Swiss francs per square meter on this graph representing Geneva and the surrounding side Swiss part of Switzerland central part of Switzerland of, of Zug are the higher areas the reason for that um, if you're looking at Switzerland as an investment, so what we see a trend is we've got a lot of countries that uh, are moving here because the taxes are, are are going higher. So if you look at taxes on the Nordic side, if you have a lot of people from uh, the UK, Germany, if they're looking at uh, moving to Switzerland, where would you move to? Um, and one of your high full um, important areas of interest is uh, either Geneva, Zouk. Zouk is very um, attractive because it's got the lowest taxes in, in Switzerland, plus it's beautiful and all those levels. So the, the, the high demand of rental properties and properties to buy in Zouk um, has really driven the property prices. Um, if you look at what prices uh, property prices have done in Zouk for the last 20 years, uh, close to 148 uh, percent over the last 23 years. So, you know, if you had bought five years ago, 10 years ago, um, you know, you would have done extremely well. The question I get these days is, you know, is it a bubble? What Zook property price is going to do in the future? And it's it's very simple: is the demand will stay high because people moving to Switzerland will still choose uh Zouk, not just because of the taxes but because of central switzerland being close to zurich being close to the alps and one of the biggest things that we've learned um because of covid people have met, moved their, their their families to have a better lifestyle so this has been driven to um post-covid that people want better lifestyle they want to be in nature they want less traffic they want to spend more time with their loved ones and family and that's also driven property prices within the Zouk area so we see that and speaking to all all the banks Zouk Cantonale Bank UBS uh uh my hypoteca with Ralph uh chatting uh part of this call is we see that these trends are going to carry on going up it might not be at the same level so if you look at you know five six years ago some of the properties in Unter Agri and Oba Agri doubled in price we don't see that but we probably going to see a consistent growth of around five percent um, if you look in the 12 months uh, property prices increased at around 3.7 percent so very exciting again in the Zouk market this graph representing price per square meter in the different regions so if you look at Zouk um, if you look at Valkfiel, uh, very high rate per square meter. Some of the rate per square meters go up to 35,000 Swiss francs a square meter, starting from 13,000. If you look at Unser Agri, Oba Agri, um, averages uh, um, starting uh, rate per square meters around 10,000, going all the way up to 24,000 Swiss francs a square meter. Oba Agri, you're more the middle range of between 15 and 23,000 Swiss francs a square meter. We see that's going to carry on because the demand is high. There's not a lot of developable land. Uh, development uh, plans take a little bit longer to get through to the system. Um, and that's where we are in, in the local property markets. If you're looking at inflation, inflation has been on the higher side in Switzerland, but a lot lower um, if you look at, you know, uh, average in, in Europe is around 5.2%. If you're looking at Switzerland, just under 3%. I think a lot of the predictions all over the world, America, Europe, um, the UK, inflation is definitely turning. Uh, one thing is I don't have a crystal ball, but we use the data and the professionals within, the within our industry to understand where we're going. So it's actually... In, uh, Privileged to have Rolf uh, Zach on, on the call today. Huge welcome, uh, uh, Zach. Uh, Rolf, um, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you very much, Tony. 
uh, for the chance to be on this panel. Um, yes, happy to tell you a little bit more about the mortgage market. Uh, maybe if you go to the next slide. <clears throat> Or can I, yes, uh, just to introduce very quick our team. Uh, <clears throat> we are a company now over three years old. Um, I have a background in development as well, uh, but realized quickly that there's a need for uh, consultancy uh, in the mortgage business, that we had a lot of clients uh, who uh, appreciated the help uh, to find the right financing for them. And uh, so what... Uh, we do is basically uh, bringing transparency into the, the mortgage market in Switzerland. It's more common in, in, in uh, foreign countries, but in Switzerland, not yet. Uh, so we really uh, are growing uh, fast now and uh, because there's a really high demand for transparency. If you maybe go to the next slide, if you're so kind. <clears throat> uh -huh, or can I do it myself? Sorry. <clears throat> uh, so uh, we say our value proposition is that we really find the best conditions for you uh, because we have over 30 uh, financial partners that we work together. We analyze your situation and then uh, negotiate for you uh, several offers. So you get like uh, not only one offer, some, but several offers uh, from us and that should save you money and time. That's kind of our value proposition. So if you get into... Uh, <clears throat> Now, uh, a bit more about the, the market. Uh, basically, there are two big factors driving the, the real estate market. One is the interest rate, which we uh, experienced, especially this year, some um, increase. But uh, right now, since uh, we are the national Fed, the Fed basically, or the National Swiss Bank didn't increase it uh, anymore because the, the inflation kind of stagnated. And so also the Currently, the, the interest rate is also uh, stable. That's basically good news. But uh, on, on, And then on, also on the other side, uh, we have population growth, which is also a big driver, a big factor for, for real estate. And uh, looking at this now on a macro level, uh, we can say that uh, Switzerland still uh, gets a lot of people into the Swiss market because it's very attractive um, uh, to not only live, but also work in, in, in Switzerland. So uh, for this small country, we get in the year over 100,000 people getting into the, uh, the Swiss market. And you can see the, the red line is basically like the, the number of products getting on the market. It's uh, decreasing, but uh, we still have a high population growth, which is uh, for uh, good news for us uh, who are working basically in the real estate market. Um, now, we, when we um, uh, talk a little bit deeper about interest, because that's uh, often what people uh, interests the most, uh, the highest priority for uh, national banks, uh, as you know, is um, fight inflation. inflation. And uh, you can see uh, that Switzerland in the last few years uh, was doing, um, also had high inflation that, than usual. Uh, but not on the same level like uh, America or the other uh, Anglo-Sax uh, countries. And, but also we had some inflation. That's why also the interest rates went up uh, from minus up to 1.7 uh, interests uh, or the interest rate from the national bank, what the, the Swiss banks get, but it's stagnating right now. And then if we look at into the future, because that's always not easy, but as uh, Tony mentioned, uh, we try our best with our partners to find out. And I had several talks with also UBS and, and other banks, how they see it. And you can see they say overall, it's actually good news because they expect, if you continue maybe to the next slide. Yes. Um, basically, uh, I quoted, uh, uh, some uh, sentences out of the U.S. market assessment, and they expect now uh, this quarter no uh, interest um, rate increase. And they also say, uh, although we expect uh, some inflation in the next two quarters or in the next half year, uh, they don't think uh, it's uh, 
although uh, the inflation will be so high that it will be necessary that the uh, national bank has to increase the interest rates. So for, for us, uh, or for um, basically uh, real estate, uh, people who are interested in real estate, this is good news that uh, interest rates right now um, sh should not increase. Um, and so it's a good way, a good shall say, a moment to lock in basically the interest rates. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> And that's, yes, that's maybe the, the, the forecast. And just to give you uh, the, act, uh, the, act, the situation, how it is right now, um, compared to summer, they came down a bit uh, because uh, we had good news also in September that the National Bank did not increase it. So the market reacted and it came down from 2.4 now, 2.3 uh, for a, a five year to over uh, 2%. Um, so that's uh, really, I think that's uh, really good news uh, that now it's very competitive to, to lock in basically um, uh, a mortgage, you know. Ra so uh, this is <clears throat> yep. very briefly, very quickly, uh, uh, I know of you how we think uh, the, the market will develop and that, you know, overall it can be said that the, the factors are on, on a, a positive for Switzerland, you know. <clears throat> Fantastic. Rolf, just a question on that. I mean, a lot of question, a lot of clients sometimes ask, you know, especially on the changing market, if if the view was that the interest rates were going to carry on going up, then it would probably be a good way to fix your interest rates. Uh, in today's current terms where we know we're going to stagnate, you know, it's, it's not going to go up where we've reached its level. Do you think it would be a good idea for clients to fix their rates or to r rather have a variable rate? What's your view on that? Uh, I think right now would be actually a good moment uh, to to actually fix it uh, uh, because right now they're, they're quite low, I, I think. And it depends also a bit of the character of the personality of his financial situation. How much risk can he take? Yep. Uh, but... Uh, I think, and I experienced that also, that a lot of customers right now, they make usually not a 10-year, uh, because we are coming from a very, very low situation where the interests were very low, and, and, and but they, they say, no, it's a good opportunity now to lock it in for four or five years. That's what we do most right now. <clears throat> Fantastic. I think you I, I think you hit the nail on the head with, you know, with 100,000 people moving to Switzerland and the reasoning what's happening with politically good or bad. I don't really like talking about politics, but if you look what's happening in Europe and the UK and Brexit um, and America and that uh, Switzerland becomes, you know, if you if you look at inflation, 2.8 percent, Europe was, you know, 5 percent. The rest of the world was hitting seven uh, seven to ten percent, um, and uh, interest rates were going much higher than it was. There's lower leverages, uh, but Switzerland, you know, unemployment rate close to two percent, low inflation, good economy. Swiss franc is strong versus the dollar, euro. It's strengthened uh, against all the currencies. So I think that uh, it's normal, you know, coming from Cape Town and being a Schweizer as Kapstadt. Bias. Um, uh, I see that there's definitely uh, people looking at lifestyle versus, um, you know, the opportunity to live in in a beautiful country where uh, you can going back like 80 years where it was safe. Your kids can walk, you know, walk on the roads and play with friends without worrying. And then it's got the the links to uh, the tax, you know, lower tax rates and just uh, the opportunity. So thank you very much for, for your, for, for your input. Um, I know we don't have a crystal ball, but just dealing with, um, with your team so far, I've had an amazing experience just so that clients can actually get an overview instead of just going to one bank. Yes, you can go to your bank and uh, you've got a relationship with, you know, Zoo Canton and Mala Bank, Credit Suisse, UBS, whoever that might be. But if you you can go to all the other banks, find the best rate, and then the client wins at the end of the day. Also find that in the development finance space, not all the banks are understanding how developers role with regarding to the structure of the payments and everything. So thank you very much for being uh, on, on our webinar today and uh, I re really appreciate your time. Great being here. Thank you very much, Tony. Thanks, thanks Ralph. Uh, our next uh, part of uh, the webinar um, is talking about our latest project, The Nest in Unsagri. Uh, this is a very special one. It's where uh, I live um, and a lot of uh, 
people has been very, very difficult to buy property in Unsagri. When we moved here four years ago, uh, we had a vision to really, um, as an ambassador from Andermatt Swiss Alps, um, and working with Swiss property for the last seven years and getting to meet uh, Janis Frakakis from uh, Janis Frakakis. I always get your name a little bit wrong, Janis, so you can you can punch me later. But it's an honor to have you part of the show. It's an honor to be working with Swiss property. Um, Swiss property, I'm going to give uh, Janis a little bit of a, uh, an intro. So Janis, we met about eight months ago. Uh, we opened our office here, Live Life Now Lounge in Unsagri. And uh, this beautiful project um, was introduced by a very good friend, uh, Mr. James Weston, um, and introduced me to Yanis. And working with the local friends and, and community, you know, Zook Rugby Club and, the, you know, the whole international market, it's always been difficult to buy property in Unsagri. And by the time they see something being built, it's sold out or rented out. And uh, and Swiss Property and Yana said, listen, we would like to have a, a local representative and an ambassador. And um, we had the opportunity to share that with our friends and, and network. Yana, huge welcome. Yana? Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. My audio is lagging a little bit, so I'm trying. Um, do you hear me well? Yeah, you perfectly. Perfect. Yeah, like I said, thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here and also very excited for our part. So, we are a developer, uh, Swiss properties, um, creating beautiful life spaces for. for everybody and um tony do you want to give a short introduction about yep. uh the nest absolutely so Janis, thanks very much yeah, swiss property has been developing amazing projects uh over the last 10 years they've got projects all over switzerland and in uh, an office in munich in germany um i got the honor to meet them while develop while they were developing three houses in Andermatt, swiss alps uh term falker uh, most amazing project with made out of high quality wood with spa high-end luxury alpine chic um, apartments um, so they've got a very big track record amazing team um, i've worked with many developers over the last 25 years and developers always uh, not all of them uh, is always about return on investment um, and the financial model where Swiss property is more about adding value to the communities that people live in um, and number two designing it that it's not just one big block of flats that add as much value to um to the community as possible so for example they bought um this property two and a half years ago in schoenwart in hohenweg in unsagri beautiful position overlooking unsagri the village um overlooking um the agresse um and most impo uh, important uh, vantage point next to the forest at the back um, with this incredible view and any developer normally would you know design one big block of flats on here because it's easier to design it's cheaper to design um, and they spend two years really designing a, a new boutique luxury um, community consisting of 34 apartments six villas um, three villas of being smaller around 350 square meters three bigger villas of between 600 and 800 square meters. And the design team spent so much time on the urban design and the topography. As you can see in the slides, the surrounding properties didn't lose its views because it's um, not pitched roofs. Uh, they had a lot of greenery. Now to design a project of this scale, it's, it's easy to put one big block of flats there because at the end of the day, it would sell it or they would build it, sell it to an investor, they would rent it out. Yeah, they really wanted the essence of this project to be luxury, something uh, that would stand the test of time that, wow, what a project, what a, what a, not a project, but another community that's linked uh, with apartments and some houses, and it's it linked into the surrounding houses with the neighbors on the right and the left and the behind, wanted to make sure that whatever they developed added value to them as well, and not just one big block of flats. So really exciting to, to to actually be launching this to the market today. It actually launched on HomeGate. 
Um, the first phase consisting of uh, 11 apartments, uh, three in phase uh, in block uh, in house A, four apartments in house B, and four apartments in house uh, B2, and then with three large villas, um, E, F, G, and H. The time frame of what we're looking at, we're launching to the market now to start building in April, May next year for completion and handover in April, May uh, 2026. And, and one of the things um, uh, that developers and people always say, you know, developers are lucky and they make so much money and it's easy. Um, I always say to clients is that the cost of buying land and holding on that land and designing the right thing, then to get your building permits and to go to Einsprach and to go all these levels, by the time you hand over in 2026, it's five, six years later. So one of the things that Ralph and we were talking about is there's so much demand, but it's very difficult to develop. So when a development of this nature comes by, a lot of clients say, Tony, have you got anything else in the pipeline? And I'm going, guys, this took like three, four years to get to this stage. And yeah, something might come down the line, but it's going to take that developer three to five years. And the cost of money developing and the cost of materials and wood and if you look what will happen with the war uh, in the current stages on glass steel wood all those things is a thing that's out of the control of the developer so uh, dealing with developers that actually want to create something amazing it costs more um, but at the end of the day um, they're, they're putting the sweat blood and tears in to create something very special so the district plan of the nest have, has been approved uh, where you can see the, the overall layout. Um, uh, what's extremely nice is that the development's built under basement, so you don't look into other uh, cars. A lot of developers uh, build in an LU, and then in the middle, you've got a car park, and then you overlook, you've got this beautiful apartment, looks into a car park. Yeah, because of the topography, they've created the basements underneath, so it's hiding the cars. So all you see is greenery, lush luxury um, uh, forest and views of the lake in the town. So beautifully designed. Um, the, the ethos of the development was actually, uh, if you look at the, uh, the rice paddies on, uh, on a, on a uh, steep mountain, to carve the mountain out and to create the topography so the all properties have got the, the same views and attributes. So uh, briefly, just give an overview, very luxury, wood, glass, and steel, not big blocks of flats. It's more uh, limited, more boutique, uh, terraced apartments, beautiful views of, of Agritel and, and the Agri Sea and the town, uh, beautiful uh, yacht balustrading, um, lush luxury um, in the internals where clients can actually choose uh, different versions of, of, you know, the darker versions, the lighter versions, the more luxury market uh, uh, versions, but also creating a service where normally with developers, that's it, and you don't have a choice. Swiss Property, I've, I've got the, the service level where they actually want clients to have an amazing experience to custom their own apartment, because one day when they sell the property, you don't have 34 apartments all the same. Uh, I, I've seen lots of other projects, 90 apartments in a block, everything's the same. And in one day when you sell, you're in competition. Where yeah, you're very limited in your competition and that's where you see the capital growth. What makes us unique, green, sustainable, it's um, thermal heating, um, solar panels. Uh, they've thought of everything from a, from a luxury point of view. Um, going into villas, um, overlooking, um, the beautiful uh, Unta Agri luxury style uh, rim float pools um, with incredible finishes. So here you're in a community that's not just apartments. You've got apartments, we've got smaller villas, we've got the bigger villas. Um, and just to give you a sense of pricing, um, the apartments uh, range from 2.5 million to uh, the Attica apartments at 3.5 million. We've got a duplex penthouse um, ranging at around 5.9 million. The luxury villas, uh, which we've had loads of interest already, and without even going to the market, we're dealing with about 150 people, uh, clients that have showed interest that we're busy walking through. Some have uh, signed reservations for the large villas and lots of interest for, for the small villas. But this is the, 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 the essence that takes so much time is to use the surroundings to create something very special that's green. Uh, sustainable and that you can feel wow this is something unique and you can see the time as the team has taken a lot of time to create something special which adds value to the community 
um, because that is what increases the property values. Um, a lot of clients say, oh, another development. And I, I always try and say to clients is that you need to think of the future. And if nothing changes, and you and yeah, we're in a scenario of Unta Agri, Oba Agri, Zouk, you've got a lot of beautiful properties. But if you don't have projects like this, you won't have capital growth. This is actually pushing the ceiling. So I think that there's a lot of excitement for uh, many years to come um, with the demand um, and the communities involved in, in, in the Zouk area. Um, I've tried to keep it as short and sweet. Um, I would like to thank you for, for your time. We just hit over 30 minutes. Uh, Ralph, was there anything from your side that you, you wanted to close on? Uh, just uh, congratulations. I'm coming from the development business. I can say it's really nice project. Uh, I think it fits in very nice in the landscape also. And I think that's very important too. And uh, yeah, uh, I wish I could afford it. <laughs> well, you never know the future. The future uh, yes, that's true. That's true. That's you know, true. I've got uh, my, my, both my boys, is, you know, funny you say that. They say, dad, you need to work harder so you can get the big villain. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? So uh, that's, true. that's just putting it out there. Um, anything from Yanis' side? I know you had a little bit of a uh, connection error, Yanis. Yeah, thank you very much for a great presentation. You've basically said everything. <laughs> um, no, also for us, it was a, um, it is a flagship project. Uh, I mean, something in this size um, is something we haven't done before, but we are very committed to the exactly three years. So it took a lot of blood, sweat, and tears for us to come to. The um, but we've seen uh, there's a lot of interest, especially also from the soup market um, and ex expat community is very large. That's why we involved you, Tony, as, um, as let's say, the agri mayor, expat mayor ambassador, because community also from a social sustainability, sustainable uh, perspective, um, which also adds value to the project overall. Um, What's funny is we've seen a lot of interest from people trying to downscale um, from bigger properties or houses and looking for something um, a little bit smaller, but still in a nice community and with um, yeah with all the services and facilities that you need. So we created um, playgrounds, leisure areas, grill areas, uh, walkway to the town and. And what's nice is that you have uh, the private streets which are managed, um, snow clearing is managed for you. Um, so basically everything is taken care of, uh, which adds value to the project overall. Um, yeah, like I said, very excited to get started. Um, we launched this morning, um, got already about 20 requests. So um, yeah, don't miss your opportunity there. Thank you, Tony. Hey, th thanks very much, Yanis. Uh, thank you, Rolf, for your time. Uh, we are going to be doing these webinars um, every month, just giving an update what's happening in the Swiss market, local markets. Um, so if you don't want to miss the next uh, webinar, uh, you know, just register um, with the team. But that's me. Thank you very much. Uh, wishing you an amazing week ahead. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, guys.